hopefully maybe everybody can can uh, plan a visit to La Posada and pick up the vibe and and then come back and be a whole different person, huh? <laughs> I think they should. I think they should give it a try. <laughs> Hi, this is Ted Kelly with another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Hey, today we've got a super, super great guest on. Her name is Tony Carter, and she's going to come on and tell us why she went all the way to Dominica, Costa Rica to open a hotel there in a beautiful, beautiful place. Hi, Tony. How are you? Good morning. I'm fantastic. How are you? I am doing well, thanks. Hey, thank you for giving us a few minutes of your time. I'm not sure what time zone you're in, but... I know that there's some different time zones between here in Costa Rica, and I want to thank you for doing that for us today. So real quickly, though, before we get into the talk of the La Posada del Mar, did I say that right? Yes, you did. Uh, before we get into the talk of your hotel, tell our viewers, our audience, a little bit about you, where you're from, and kind of like how you kind of maybe migrated to the thought of owning a hotel in Costa Rica. Yeah, um, I'm actually, I'm from California. I lived there most of my life. Um, I have two teenage daughters and um, my ex-husband and I would travel to Costa Rica a lot. We loved it here and we would come back and forth. And during uh, some of our travels, I met a wonderful woman named Leticia and uh, she owned like a small um Hotel was more like a hostel style. It didn't have, you know, it was just screens, no glass windows, no air conditioning, very simple living. Um, but I stayed at her place on multiple occasions. Her and I became very um, close friends. She's so sweet. And um, during COVID, they had no guests, right? Even the locals were not allowed to travel in Costa Rica during COVID. So she had no guests for a long, long time, I'd say a year or more. Uh, and she reached out to me and said, hey, um, you know, I'm sort of done with this place and this project. Would you be interested? I know you know the potential when COVID is over. And so I never had considered owning a hotel ever in my life until that very moment. Um, and so her and I talked numbers and she was very, very reasonable um, in there. And, and, and it just worked out, you know, it just worked out. Wow. That is that is crazy, but I love it. That is crazy, but I love the story. So, so tell me this: you you get an opportunity to own a hotel in in one of your favorite places to visit, but you haven't been in the hotel business before. So, how do you how do you put that together? I mean, just conceptually, how do you process that mentally? Yeah, I don't know. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> So it's built from the ground up and I'm so, so silly that I actually thought I was going to run the hotel from California. I thought I was going to have this hotel and have this perfect staff and everything was going to run smooth and I was going to be in California and I'd come down, you know, a couple times a year and check on everything. No. <laughs> As most times the business owners we want to we want to leap out there and we're like, oh, man, it's going to be great. And first time we get out there and we start getting slapped in the face with the, the harsh reality of being a business owner. And then it's like, oh, you got to deal with that. You got to deal with that. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you got to deal with before you get to the good stuff. Right. Oh, my gosh. I mean, one, there's a language barrier. Right. I'm learning Spanish, so I have a language barrier. Two, I don't understand Costa Rican tax law, labor law. Uh, all of, I mean, there's so many small niches of information that I had to learn very quickly so as not to mess up or, you know, do something wrong in the wrong country. Um, so, yeah, it's been an adventure. It's been an adventure. Wow. Now, how often are you in Costa Rica versus the state? Are you are you there all the time? Do you come back and forth? How, how do you how do you work that? Yeah, right now I've been living in Costa Rica full time almost two years. Um, so the ho in August the hotel will be open for two years, and so I came a little bit before that. To you know, we had to do everything. I mean, we remodeled the entire place. It doesn't look anything like it did before, and so you know everything from purchasing all the furniture and setting it up and 
getting paintings for the walls and buying all the cleaning supplies and toilet paper. So it was a lot to get going and set up. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's been great. It's really been great. So now I, I've been living here full time. It was the only way really to make it happen and make it successful. And it really, the, the business gave me an opportunity to change my life. And it's been an incredible change. The life in Costa Rica is so much different than in, in the United States. It's just a more relaxed pace, which can be annoying sometimes, right? Because, you know, from the U.S., we're always in a hurry and we got to go, go, go. And uh, it's not quite the same down here. So sometimes like when I want the electrician to show up, <laughs> that's annoying. But on a regular day-to-day -day basis, it's it's really nice. The people here are so friendly and kind and giving and generous and embracing. Um, the culture is wonderful. And it's just, it's, and you know, it's not that bad living right on the beach. So. Yeah. Yeah. Not to mention the weather. Hey, I want to, I want to come back and revisit that. Give me one second. I want to make sure I give my shout out to my sponsor so they'll keep supporting us. This episode of Ted's Hospitality Minute is being sponsored by Recovery. If you've experienced a home fire, tornado, or other natural disaster, you know how easy it is to lose everything overnight. Well, Recovery is a new app that allows you to record everything in your home, stored in the clouds for easy retrieval should disaster strike versus you trying to recall all of your household valuables, your jewelry, your heirlooms, etc. that you're going to need to settle your claim with your insurance company. The Recovered app allows you to get your claim process faster, takes a lot of stress off of you, and you're on the resolution. Check out the Recovered app today. Click on the promo code on screen and you'll get 50% off. And as always, this episode with Tony will be on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And also, please like us here on LinkedIn. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we always, always, always appreciate your thoughts and feedback. All right. Tony, tell me a little bit more about that life in Costa Rica. It sounds like it's a whole different vibe. I want to say it sounds like Margaritaville a little bit, but go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, we have a saying here in Costa Rica is Pura Vida, right? So pure life. And they use that term Pura Vida for everything. Pura Vida means hello, goodbye, thank you, you're welcome, how are you? Um, it's everything. When you're walking down the street, People just say it to you, Puerto Vida. It's just, that's that's the life here, right? Um, we're surrounded by beautiful trees and um, greenery and flowers and animals, wildlife. Uh, I'm in a unique zone in Costa Rica where the mountains basically come almost to the ocean. So we have the best of both worlds. Right up the mountainside, right across the highway is the mountains and the jungle. And right here we have the beach. And so I really am living in the best of both worlds. Wow. Now talk a little bit about how you get to your place. Is it hard to get to? Is the airport miles away? Is it reasonably close? How, how easy is it to, to get to uh, Posada? It's not easy, but that's what makes it great. Um, so typically there are two international airports here in Costa Rica, one in Liberia and one in San Jose. And so most people fly into San Jose, that would be the, the closer airport. And then it is approximately three and a half hour drive from the airport to Dominical. There are multiple ways to get here though. I mean, there are, sh this is a tourist country, right? They, they thrive on tourism. And so they try to be very accommodating to the tourists. There are tons and tons of shuttle companies that are very reasonable rates. It's like between 50 and $60 per person each way to take a shared shuttle. There's private taxis, there's Uber. And of course we have the internal domestic flights. We have two airlines, Sansa and um, Green Airways. Those are about a hundred bucks. Um, a hundred bucks each way. And it's basically a 15 minute flight. You go um, from the international airport to our small, tiny airport in a little tiny 12 person plane. Uh, but it's quick and it's affordable. Wow. And I guess you can enjoy the ride uh, through paradise to get to your place anyway. Right. So it's not so bad. 
it's not so bad. And there's some amazing sights along the way. It's not like you just have to drive on the boring highway. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. There's lots of things to look at, lots of things to see, great restaurants to stop at. Um, so tell me this. So you, you place yourself in the middle of a tropical paradise. You decide you're going to be a hotel owner. You buy this property and you start trying to figure out how you're going to run the thing and how you're going to update it. What was the biggest challenge that you had in this whole process? What would you say is your biggest challenge trying to get this thing going? Um, well, first of all, the construction was really difficult because we wanted to make, I wanted to make like a lot of upgrades and changes. And I, I, I had a different vision for the hotel for what it originally was. So, um, having the communication barrier, the language barrier was difficult. And also the building standards here in Costa Rica are not the same as what we're accustomed to in the United States. And so I found myself being disappointed regularly because I would be in the United States for a month and have an expectation for things to be getting done and be getting done a certain way. And then I would come back and they weren't anything, you know, what I had expected. So it was, I had to really maintain my expectations. I had to learn how to have some more patience and understanding. Um, I did have a very, very good friend who's from here. He's a Costa Rican guy and he owns a, um, a hardware store here. So he was incredibly valuable and helpful in the whole building process. He helped pick out materials. He helped manage the construction crews. He helped with my language barriers. And so, um, so that the construction was really difficult. I would say the next thing that was most difficult was um, getting the operating permits. So there's a lot of hoops to go through and the different um, ministries that manage the, the, the different entities that manage how you get those operating permits are drastically different than what we're used to in the United States. I've run multiple businesses in the U.S. And uh, so just even figuring out where to start, <laughs> which paperwork to start with. And it was like I found myself I would fill out this form and go to this entity. And then they'd say, no, 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 you have to go back over here and get another signature. And then I go over there and they'd say, no, 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 but you have to go over here. And so um, I know part of it was my lack of understanding, uh, but also I'm in a developing country, right? So they don't have the same systems. They don't utilize the same type of software. Things are not integrated yet in the way that we're accustomed to. So it's a lot of driving around and going from place to place in person. And it really did depend on who you talk to at that entity as to how fast things could happen, whether they liked you, whether they were in a good mood that day, whether they processed your paperwork in a timely manner. So uh, those were my, my most challenging things. Wow. And you talked about the construction side of it. Were the materials that you wanted to use in your renovation, were those readily available there on the island? Or was it something where you had long lead times to get stuff that you wanted? Yeah, no, no, no. So we're not on an island. We're in Central America. So they... So, but, but everything, but nothing is made here, right? So everything has to be shipped in. So things are very expensive here. People think, oh, we're going to Central America. Um, you know, they think Mexico is cheaper than the United States. Well, Costa Rica is not because we do not make any products here. And so everything is very, very expensive. There's lots of import taxes that are, you know, and so that, is the trickle down effect. There's a, there's a domino effect there. And so yes, materials are available, not as many, not as vast. Like you, you know, if, if you're going to go buy something and you want it to match all the other things, like say example, light fixtures outside, buy extra first because you're never going to find them again. Right. <laughs> so, um, so yes, there are materials, but there's challenges with that too. <laughs> Wow. I think you're going to, you could be an expert in the States on how to plan a renovation. I think now with all of the, all of the knowledge and all of the things to look out for that you've learned. Well, you know, I learned a lot in California. I, I had uh, multiple rental homes. And so I think I just, 
you know, you pick up things over the years. And I'm so grateful that I had that time and developed those skills because otherwise, as a woman running a hotel by myself, would could be incredibly challenging. I, I do understand the fundamentals of how things work. Like I understand how the breaker box works. Maybe I can't fix it myself, but I'm able to troubleshoot a problem and then call someone and tell them what to come fix. Um, That's awesome. So tell me this. So you got your hotel up and running. It's renovated. It's beautiful space. What are some of the challenges that you face on an ongoing basis with your building? Is it you know, humidity? Is it a rainy season? Are there things unique to that area that you have to deal with that you have to stay in front of for your hotel, your building? Yeah, the humidity and, and, you know, we're right on the ocean. So the, we have this sea, the salt water and the humidity. It's really humid here, super hot. So like for today, for example, it's probably going to be between 80 and 90 degrees, probably closer to 90 with an 80% humidity. So it's really hot. Um, we have to be very careful in the hotel rooms themselves. If they stay closed for more than a day without the air conditioning on, they're going to grow mold on the walls. It's going to get moldy and it's going to smell bad in there. So we have to be very conscientious of that. If someone hasn't rented a room for a couple of days, we need to make sure we open the room up, we air it out, we turn the air conditioner on for an hour to help dry out the rooms. Um, um, another thing is, is that the water is, um, has lots of minerals. It's very, very hard waters, which is really hard on appliances, hard on faucets, hard on washing machines, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, another thing that's super hard in this developing country is that the power surges, electricity turns off and on all day, all the time. And so there have to be certain protections put in place. You have to have um, surge protectors everywhere, power strips. Everything has to be plugged into a power strip because otherwise your appliances, your computers, your cell phone chargers are going to get burned out daily. Just a day in the life of paradise, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I'll take it. I will take it any day. It's, it is amazing. You know, I went back to the U.S. last year. And the, I was, I think when you're living there, you don't notice as much. And I, after being removed for over a year and going back, I just, I heard just background conversation and there was so much negativity. People seemed so upset and angry all the time. And I didn't realize it when I lived there and when I was in it, because it was a normal part of my life. But now that I've been removed from it, I feel like I'm a little bit more sensitive to that. Wow. That is amazing. And I, and I think I think you're right. There's a lot more tension in the States these days and people people tend to get upset very easily at each other. And, uh, you know, it's just it's a, it's a lot of decorum is kind of left uh, left this place. I'm not sure why, but hopefully uh, hopefully maybe everybody can can uh, plan a visit to La Posada and pick up the vibe and and then come back and be a whole different person. Huh? I think they should. I think they should give it a try. <laughs> so, so Tony, tell me this. Is there a better time to visit your property and Dominico, Costa Rica, in terms of its festivals um, or surfing or all of that good stuff? Is there a good time versus a bad time to visit you? Well, I would say it's really rainy in the, like, September, October, November. So that's the time I would say don't come because it's not a little bit of rain, right? Even though it's still warm outside, you're not going to get cold or anything like that. You're going to be physically soaking wet, just walking from the door to the car. You're drenched like you stepped inside of a shower. So, you know, it's uncomfortable. Uh, the rest of the year, I would say is absolutely wonderful. The surfing here is amazing. Uh, it It's it's kind of crazy to walk down the street and see everybody is super fit. <laughs> so like I, I sometimes I'm like, Oh man, I didn't realize I was self-conscious till I saw that person's abs. <laughs> um, but at, people here are super, super fit because they do, they surf every single day 
Um, everybody's watching the tides. We have tide charts up everywhere. Everybody always is, is out in the water. So the surfing is really fun. We just wrapped up uh, Envision, which is a big, big music festival. Um, I think it's between 10 and 15,000 attendees, which is really big because we don't have any towns that large, like on the whole coast. So um, the festival is huge. It's, uh, it's the end of February, beginning of March every year. We get so many new visitors. Everybody is just so happy. And so it's just, it's such a good time. It's a really good time. Wow, that is awesome. So we got to make sure we uh, put you down on the calendar for February or March of next year to see if we can make our way over there and visit you right around the festival time. <laughs> we also have um, here in Dominical, um, Sam Reedy. He is the um, national surf champion for Costa Rica. And he lives right here in Dominical. So that makes our, our uh, town pretty special. That is awesome. Well, Tony, I want to thank you for giving us a few minutes of your time today and talking about La Fasada. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful setup. And I am actually, I am bowing down and super proud of you for all of the things that you've done in getting that to where it's like you're, you're really loving it and, and things are good. And like I said, it sounds like Margaritaville to me, but uh, I, I love what you've done there and I'm really proud of you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah, it's it's been a wonderful adventure and I, I'm so happy it worked out this way. Okay. This has been another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Please stay in touch. You can check out this episode with Tony uh, on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And as always, we ask you guys to follow us on LinkedIn, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we always appreciate your thoughts and feedback. All right. This is Ted with another Ted's Hospitality Minute, and we will see you guys next time. Have a great week. Ted's Hospitality Minute is sponsored by Recover It. Don't wait for disaster to happen to wish you had done this.